Welcome to the second episode of 2024 of Out of the Pods. I'm Deep T. And I'm Natalie. Wow, you are in such a good mood. <laughs> I think I'm going to do that every single time until I can stop. Like two, three, four, five. We'll or see. six. Six. <laughs> oh my gosh, can I tell you something? So what? this is a fun fact. You already know this fact. But I say the word six, like, you know, yeah. one, two, three. Or first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, incorrectly. <laughs> I've done it my entire life. What is, how do you actually say it? Sixth. 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 Why can't you Sixth. 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 Why can't you so say for that? Some, for some reason, I can't say it. And I said Sixth. it again last night when I was talking to New York boy. Yeah. And he was what? like, uh, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Sixth. <laughs> He's like, what the? <laughs> DT said what? <laughs> DT said what? Because, because a New York boy and I got into a fight. And Ooh. I told Deep T, I'm not going to talk to this guy anymore. And yeah. so that's why. I was like, shook it. I am, shook it. I am <laughs> drooling right now. <laughs> why are you drooling? You're like, what? Because you were like, what? I know. That was I like know you really... were trying to. And I know you were trying to cover for me. Like, yeah. He's trying to be like, oh, let me just like <laughs> not give any indication. Uh, I was like, oh. wrong. <laughs> but thank dead. you. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for you, Natty. <laughs> Six the. <laughs> so to, um, I haven't told Deepty this, but New York boy and I have been fighting, but we spoke last night. I will share the entire story with you guys in like probably a few episodes, but like things happen like, mm, oh, going down. Yeah. but anyways, this episode isn't about dating. <laughs> However, okay. I said the word sixth, sixth. I said it sixth. No, it's sixth. Like sixth. Okay. I said that word and he was like, do you know you say it wrong? <laughs> oh my God. You're like, thank you. Like, I was like, no, I was like, I, I know I do, but I thought I was saying it right. Like I used to say it really wrong. I used to say like, sis. <laughs> and I was like, I thought, and, and I, I thought I had now been saying it right. Like saying six. Mm -hmm. And he goes, no, it's six. Like however the other six people the. say it. <laughs> what teacher you it? up? <laughs> I don't know, but I have been saying it wrong since like, if I could really remember when someone told me. Actually, I think I've been saying it wrong my entire life. Like when I learned that word, but yeah. someone told me in high school that I was, oh. they're like, uh, they're like, you're mm, saying something's it wrong. off. And then I remember telling my sister, am I saying this wrong? And she's like, yeah, but we just assumed he had a lisp like for that <laughs> specific word. So we're like, whatever. <laughs> That's cute though. But it's your I, I can't figure out how to say it. It's like my mouth won't let me say sixth. 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 Yeah. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna work on Sixth that. The. We're gonna work on that. <laughs> Why can't I say it? Sixth. Wait. Sixth. Hold on. Sixth. Oh. <laughs> that was like a really hard one for you. <laughs> Sixth. I can't. We literally have to okay. take a shot every time. <laughs> I know. Sixth. <laughs> but okay. Moving on. Anyways, I say that word wrong. Uh, but going back into bro. it, it has been a big news week Huge. for love is blind this is absolutely so big of what is happening in our love is blind world but let me just like set the stage for everyone if you haven't heard by now according to an article by variety renee poche if you guys remember her we had her on the podcast so go listen to that episode for all the full details but renee poche is a cast member from season five whose storyline was completely cut from the show and she is suing kinetic content and netflix after being penalized four million dollars for violating her non-disclosure agreement by publicly discussing her experience on the show the lawsuit is seeking to nullify her contract and is claiming intentional infliction of emotional distress she has hollywood powerhouse lawyers brian friedman and mark Gregos, Gregos. I, I, we literally Gergo. had to look up. no Gergos. 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 mark Gergos who are leading this case. We had to look up the pronunciation of that last name. That one was a tough one. <laughs> so I've heard of Brian Freeman. Like it is 
really amazing that he is repping Renee in this um, because he has repped some really big stars. Like he has repped Chris Harrison, who was formerly the host of the Bachelor franchise, Gabrielle Union, Mariah Carey, Diplo, like really, really Ooh. big stars. So I, I do think that she really has a case here considering yeah. that he is taking it on. Um, but what do you think about all of this? I mean, I have some... I just have some thoughts. Like, what do you think about that four million penalty from Kinetic Content? It's clearly, that I thought was wild. It's crazy. We both know that it's literally a scare tra- tactic to kind of get her to stop spilling all of the details about her experience on the show. Clearly, you can. It's evident that that's the case, especially when she's like a vet. She, there's no chance she has four million dollars. So it's obviously 100%. to scare the shit out of her. And I think that's so fucked up. I agree. I think the fact that it's $4 million, they know she will never be able to pay that. Exactly. Um, I agree with you. I think it's a scare tactic. Um, And I I remember seeing comments somewhere about this story. I think it was on like a U.S. Weekly post or something. Like, you know, those Instagram posts from Mm -hmm. uh, publications or, or media networks. They were talking yes. about the story and someone commented, they must be penalizing her for four million because they know she's going to lose or they mm. know she is lying. And I was like, I don't think that's the case because there is a history of large corporations, large companies, large entities who bully mm. people with these types of fines that they know yes. will scare people who don't have the money. Like there is a history of that in the U.S., Exactly. So I don't, that 4 million to me just shows how greedy more so kinetic content is. Right. And they know she's never going to pay up. It's literally just about making a case for her so that like other people follow suit. You know what I mean? It's kind of like making an example out of her essentially, but we've seen it in bachelor nation before where, you know, someone will say something about production and they get p- penalized and fined for such a big like amount. And it's essentially to make them an example and make sure that people align with not, you know, speaking out against production. It's, it's I so bad. Do, I actually do think that they're making Renee an example because it's mm-hmm. interesting that they're penalizing Renee, but they did not, penalize Uche who's been very vocal about his experience with production and talked about where things were edited on his season um and then also Nick and Danielle as far as I know they have not been penalized by kinetic content or Netflix you know that's Um, interesting because why do you why do you think that that's the case because I have a theory (laughs) okay so my theory is that because Renee wasn't a main cast member like Mm -hmm. she didn't have much screen time on her season like there was yeah. maybe like two seconds of her presence yeah. um I feel like they feel like they can make her an example because of that I think Nick and Danielle have larger platforms Uche yeah. even though he may not have many followers he you know people know who he is from season five do you remember when Renee came on our podcast and she spoke about her alleged experience on the show I think that like kind of just like opened up our eyes to how traumatic of an experience that she had and I'm like actually really proud of her for countersuing honestly because I think if it were you and me like what would we do I have no idea like I would just be so terrified I'd just be like oh my gosh like I'm out you know I don't know you know (laughs) Because it does take a lot of energy and a lot of money to yeah. counter sue. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously when a big production company like Kinetic Content does it, it's, it's I feel like it's not that big of a deal aside from mm-hmm. it really hurts like the reputation of the Love is Blind franchise and, and their personal reputation as a company. Right. But to be one person going through all of that, that's a lot of like stress that I, I don't, I would have to weigh like, is it worth it? Yeah. But I am very proud of Renee and also people like Tranding, who has, mm-hmm. um, who also has her own lawsuit against um, kinetic content. Yeah, that we've talked about. There's, you know, the sexual assault allegations, um, um, and and that's what that her lawsuit is about. But I don't know. I, I just get it, it's a it's a huge lift when it's when it's coming from an individual. 
Natalie, do you remember when we first started talking about our intentions to start freezing our eggs a couple of episodes ago? Mm Mm-hmm. We received so many messages from women about it, and I realized how important it is to understand our fertility. I agree. Like, I don't think that we should be waiting to understand our fertility until right when we're trying to have kids. I want kids in the future, just not right now. So I think it's really important to understand factors that would impact my fertility. So I really like modern fertility. It was created to test your fertility hormones at home. You start with a simple finger prick, then you mail it in with a prepaid label, and then you'll get your results within a few business days. And then you'll get insight into your hormone levels, like what every hormone means, your ovarian reserve, aka if you have more or fewer eggs than average for your age and other important factors that can impact your fertility. And if you want, you can download the results to review with your doctor for next steps. Okay, that's actually amazing. And I've heard hormone testing at a fertility clinic can cost over $600. So I feel like doing it at home is such an easy option. Yeah, and it's $179. So it's an affordable way to test your fertility hormones. And you can get reimbursed for the test through your FSA or HSA. And right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash out of the pods. That means your test will cost $159, which is a fraction of what it would cost at a fertility clinic. Get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash out of the pods. Modernfertility.com slash out of the pods. Um. One thing that Friedman told another publication deadline is, quote, these agreements are being used as swords to threaten people to keep them silent and also as shields to hide their illegality behind a signature and an attitude of saying, well, you signed it, end quote. I thought that was really interesting because I do agree. Like if you think about our contracts that we signed for um, Love is Blind, it's it's kind of crazy. Like I won't go into like the full details, but it – there is a lot of like a lot of things they say we can't do. And I've, mm-hmm. I also remember reading it and being like, is this legal? Yeah. Like, is this, is this legal? See, I never had the question, is it legal? But I was like, you know what? I guess they have the right to, you know, create a contract in whatever terms they seem necessary. Right. But I was, I remember when I was about to sign the contract and literally my entire family sat down and we projected the contract. We read it page by page and I almost did not sign it because I was like, there's so much left for up for interpretation. Like there's just like blurred lines. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I will literally have no control. But at the same time, I was like, this is such a cool opportunity and mm, like, too. yeah, and I was like, why not just do it? Because I don't think any of these things would happen, you know? I agree. When I was thinking about the worst case scenario, reading the contract, it's hard to think about the worst case scenario. You're like, yeah. what is really the worst thing that can happen? It's like signing a job contract or like when you sign your job offer. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like you think to yourself, what's the worst thing that can happen? Yeah. When I signed my job offer with EY, when I made the shift from HR into management consulting, I knew nothing about management consulting. I knew nothing about EY. Right. Um, but the thing is you take the chance cause you're like, well, what's the worst that can happen? Like this is a very known company. It's not like they're going to mm-hmm. screw me over. Um, but then you hear at companies, like I'm not talking about EY, but in general, like things like sexual assault happens, like there's, mm-hmm. you know, like companies, do illegal things too but those are things you just don't expect just like we wouldn't when we signed our contracts for love is blind with kinetic content or with delirium tv i mean which i think is a subsidiary of kinetic content but i'm not sure you know you don't think that like all these types of manipulation can happen or even like these allegations of sexual assault yeah um you just your mind just doesn't go there when you sign this contract because it's like signing a job offer no you know, like I, big I, big company, they'll take care of me. Like, of course they won't do anything crazy because I've never seen something like that in the news. They're like a well-known company. Like, why would they ever take that risk? But then you get in it and you're like, holy shit. Yeah. And especially with Love is Blind being such a big TV show, you don't expect it because you're like, obviously they're never going to do you wrong like that. But you're totally right about the job analogy. I love that you mentioned that because it just proves to you that like work culture is so important and I feel like the environment that we were working in was not good 
because it's just not like reality TV. There's a reason why reality TV is like kind of crumbling a little bit right now because participants are speaking out about their experiences and it's a lot of the time a little bit traumatizing <laughs> and yeah. it's just crazy how I'm just proud of her. I'm truly just really proud of her for standing up and weirdly like I know that you can is has been backing her up and I think that that's like I'm glad that she has that support. I agree. I very yeah. much agree. Going back to what Friedman said about the agreements, though, like mm -hmm. how they're being used as swords to threaten people to keep them silent. I really do think that that's what those contracts have are for like the ones that we sign and I don't think it's okay like if a production company isn't doing something wrong why are they keeping people from talking about their full experiences yes and why are they keeping I know people there's, yeah. why is there like a fine to leave yeah you know? why is there a fine to leave if Chris Colin, the creator of the show says that people can leave whenever they want then why is that $50,000 fine there exactly Exactly. It's, it's literally the, the contract is literally set up to make sure that you will never step out of line. It's, it's literally every part of it is like a scare tactic, you know, and it's, yeah. I, I'm glad that the uh, article came out. I'm glad the um, lawyers have said like, this is essentially an illegal contract. And I, I was like, thank God someone's saying something about it for future participants. I do. I hope that it makes changes. Do you really um, think that they're going to make changes, though? <laughs> I hope that this does lead to, like, a broader effort to amend these sorts of contracts because they are really scary to sign. I think it always yeah. goes back to, like, people saying, well, you signed it. Like, you shouldn't have signed it. But, I again, it goes back to, like, you watch these shows, and if you don't know how they're made behind the scenes, you think, really, what is the worst that can happen? Reality Ashley, I think we've talked about her multiple times on this show, but Reality Ashley posted on her Instagram about the story where she mentions that she heard Renee was allegedly going to film Perfect Match season two. And I thought that was kind of wild because I'm like, is it relevant? Like, what did you think about that? I think it was relevant for Reality Ashley um, because... I felt like this was implying that like Renee may be exaggerating or lying because why would she want to do another show produced by kinetic content and Netflix if she is, um, you know, alleging she went through, you know, like things like imprisonment or, you know, was put in unsafe situations. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I actually understand why she included the fact that Renee allegedly agreed to film Perfect Match season two. She is not on Perfect Match season two. That we can confirm. But um, I, I don't think that because Renee wanted to film Perfect Match season two, if it's true, like that, is a, that means that she is exaggerating or lying. I agree. I think like um, it, from my perspective, the reason why I want to say that it's not relevant whatsoever is because sometimes after you've gone through something really difficult, you kind of suppress that emotion or you suppress that like experience because you're trying to just deal with it. And so when you're moving on in life, you kind of sit down and you reflect back. And sometimes it can take years for this to happen. That's why people as adults go to therapy and they try to heal their childhood trauma. So it's just like that. It's like we're trying to process things. And so, I mean, like we tend to just move on. And if the opportunities are pres presented to us, obviously we're like, okay, should we take it or not? But I feel like sometimes participants don't even realize that they were wronged until they hear other people talking about it. Specifically, I think UCAN was a huge part of that too, is because like Nick Thompson and Jeremy came out with like a lot of allegations, obviously. And so I feel like there's strength in numbers. So when you hear about other people's like experiences and them recanting it, I feel like it makes you like think about what you went through and realize that it's not okay. Yeah. I have also like a, um, I think an additional take on that. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's separate. Like I think, I think about our experience, right? I had like, I did not enjoy my filming experience. I felt like 
there was things that happened that was very manipulative. Um, yeah. I look very low on kinetic content. I love Netflix, though. I'm not going to lie. But I think that kinetic mm -hmm. content really, because you're, you're kind of leading people to get married and you're also casting very for the most part, very normal, normal people who average people. Yeah. Yeah. Like that type of thing in terms of like personality, their willingness to be part of the drama. I think that there is a level of higher manipulation compared to other shows. That's just yeah. based on what I've heard from other people from other dating shows, other production companies, etc. Even though I had a shitty experience, did I take advantage of all the really cool opportunities that was handed to me when our show came out? Like mm -hmm. the fact that I was able to go to all these Netflix events that, you know, I was able to be part of all these panels that were led by Netflix. Yes. Because in my mind, oh, and then, and then on top of that, like I considered perfect match season one and season two. Yeah. I remember. Even though I, I like, did too. Paid. Yeah. I'm going to go on a tangent, um, but I've been a little bit overwhelmed just starting this new year. Everyone is talking about new year resolutions and I just feel like, I don't know. I feel like I'm setting just really hard goals for myself, but I feel like one place I've started off really well is revamping my eating habits. And HelloFresh has made that so easy for me, especially because I've been using their health forward options like over 30 calorie smart and protein smart recipes. I actually am finding comfort in knowing that HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Each HelloFresh box is packed with farm fresh ingredients and everything arrives pre-portioned right to your doorstep for less hassle and less wasted food. Okay, I'm actually going to add both of those as my New Year resolution. So less hassle in life and less wasted food. And I feel like HelloFresh just saves me so much time in the kitchen and completely eliminates the need to think about what I'm going to eat because I have the recipe for my meals and I have everything that I need. So I know that each meal is going to be healthy, quick, and super delicious. Yes, go to HelloFresh.com slash out of the pods free and use code out of the pods free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's a free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash out of the pods free with code out of the pods free. Um, I, 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 for me, it was a way of like, how do I like take control of what I went through? I went through a really shitty experience filming, but how do I make it all worth it by going to these really cool opportunities? And mm -hmm. also like I went through this really shitty experience with kinetic content, but maybe this next show will be different because even though it's the same production company, different producers. Yeah. And now I'm smarter and better. And now I could like, you know, go through this experience and have this once in a lifetime experience, but I'm, I'm smarter to not be taken advantage of. Yeah. And not to mention also like with perfect match and like the whole situation with Renee wanting to do perfect match. I feel like a lot of the, how do I put, I don't want to say abuse cause that's not the word, but a lot of like the, mm, the challenges that Renee is dealing with, with kinetic content happened right before the show was supposed to air. So I feel like she chalked it up to, oh, I just had a bad fiance and that's why all this shit happened to me. But it's literally how they treated her in the aftermath when the show was about to air. That's, I think, where it really, like, she was like, oh my gosh, like, taken aback, like, I cannot believe this is happening to me. And so, and I, I'm Perfect Match, like, the potential to be on Perfect Match well, happened she said way this before that. She realized, like, it's, it's him that's the problem it's not kinetic essentially so she was okay with doing perfect match until right before the show aired when they literally were like trying to silence her and that's when she was like oh my gosh the problem is him plus this production company they're literally ruining my life and so I think like it kind of all snowballed later and not just like right after filming had ended you know but yeah. it's just it's a lot do you think that these types of lawsuits, like this one, um, the sexual assault claims, the food and sleep deprivation claims, you know, like the lawsuits with the lawsuits that are led by Jeremy Hartwell and Tran Ding, do you think that this will lead to the end of the Love is Blind franchise? Oh, that is a great question. I don't think that it's going to be the end of it. I think there's going to be fines to be paid. I think there's going to be 
obviously they're going to have to, I don't know. I feel like there's a settlement coming. I don't know what's going to happen, but I really truly think that this franchise is so big and there's so many seasons that have been filmed that they will find a way to continue airing that because ultimately I feel like a lot of the time, uh, headlines, all these like bad things kind of like subside, like within five years, I feel like if things go better and they make changes, all of the stuff will just like fall out and people will forget. Truly. Yeah. I was going to say the new cycle is so fast. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, people remember the lawsuit and then, you know, they start talking about how great like one season of the show was. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, more news about a lawsuit comes through and then, you know, people are focused on the actual show. And so I think that like a lot of these claims and allegations and lawsuits will be forgotten. Um, I, I don't think I agree with you. I don't think it, it will lead to the end of the Love is Blind franchise. I think Sadly, that no. if Connecticut, if, if it does, if, if anything, the worst case scenario, it'll lead to the end of Connecticut content. Like they will no longer be able to produce Love is Blind. I think that's yeah. a worst case scenario. Oh, well, I guess best case for technically many. Like, best depends case, on who you yeah. ask. But like, <laughs> yeah. I think the worst case scenario for Connecticut content and Netflix is that, um, Love is Blind will stop being produced by kinetic content. Considering mm-hmm. a lot of what's happening is around that production company, I think a new production company would take up producing Love is Blind. But and that would be like the, I guess, the solution for what is happening. That means that Kinetic or Delirium TV would have to let go of their, they would have to sign over their rights for the show, essentially. But because do they, they own have. it to I Netflix? I I think Netflix actually owns the like the right to Love Is Blind, like the name and everything. Mm, I thought the opposite way. I thought that Kinetic and Delirium sold the show to Netflix, and they, they still stole have the, the rights. Show. That means that Netflix owns it, right? Just to to sell the show being on their platform only, but not the right. Who knows, though? I don't know the legalities yeah, of the situation. Like, yeah, it's interesting how it will, like, go about, though. I do have to say one thing, though. I, I think, like, when I first heard about all the allegations that Nick and Danielle put out there and just, like, it started small. And I was just like, oh, this is interesting. Like, I didn't really think that big much of it and then when like our experiences so, were different like yeah day, like it was so different yeah and, uh, and that's I, why I i'm thinking about it very different experiences yeah and like now that i'm like looking at the news and everything i feel like there's people f- not just from love is blind now like married at first sight there is a reason why the foundation is crumbling and like a change has to be made for sure. That's like so evident. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll keep you guys updated how this story progresses. I'm curious if there's going to be more updates. I'm very curious if this will have any impact on Love is Mine season six coming out February 14th. So my personal opinion is that it won't. I think people are nope. going to forget about this in a month when um, season six comes out. But we'll see how transparent the season six cast is. Like, I'm curious if they will start talking because I feel like with what has been said by people on our season, some people on season three, if you really do your digging, Mm -hmm. um, I think season four, they're a very quiet, they follow the rules. They, I feel like they very much are, I wouldn't say up kinetics, but, but they, I think they're more like, I don't want to be part of this drama, but, And then season five is talking, but I wonder if what type of cast season six will be. Mm -hmm. And truly, I feel like, yeah, but (laughs) truly when you have fresh blood, uh, I feel like it's just like nerve wracking because you remember when we were in that state, we were like, oh, my God, like there's so many things going on and you just don't want to step out of line because you're like, there is a contract in place. There's an NDA in place. There's like so much going on. And you're constantly reminded. Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. I'm, I know season six is being told the same things. Yeah. Yeah. With especially right now with everything that's going on in the media, I feel like they have so many stricter rules for them and they're keeping them on a leash. You know, they're like, if you want to be aired. (laughs) One thing I did hear, this is some tea for you guys. They're not allowed to talk to 
past cast members. Like, well, because I, I will say, I think that's how like future season cast members get smarter is they'll reach out to past cast members. Mm -hmm. um, less about us. I, th I, I have a feeling they're probably like season six people are probably reaching out to season five people. Yeah. Um, just like how season five people reach out new. to season four people um, yeah. and so on. Um, but I, I've heard that like kinetic content is like telling season six cast members like you better not talk to alumni so on february 14th natalie so on february 14th you're saying we can't reach out to them and have them come on the podcast <laughs> they're gonna be like no or, no no no. Or they're not gonna get any advice but i was like look i was like the smartest thing you can do if you were on love is blind is reach out to a former cast member. Like no mm -hmm. one is ever gonna like tattle on you or say no. I mean, I would do the same. It's like you're doing your research and preparing yourself. Like, why wouldn't you? But I thought yeah. that was kind of crazy that they're like kind of putting now these boundaries. I've also heard that they've been telling future cast members like we won't give you opportunities if you, you know, step out of line type of thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they're just getting really, really strict. That's like really fucked up. It's such a uh, it's, there's so much manipulation and I feel like even me like going through I feel like I had a positive experience I think like there was moments where I didn't realize it was manipulation but it 100% was it's like I mean thankfully I just didn't have uh, why are some of these like newer cast members making shake look so good you know I'm like thank god I had shake like he wasn't that bad <laughs> you know but wow that's uh it's it's crazy we'll see what happens though I'm like I'm excited for change to happen, and I feel like, thank God for people actually speaking out and doing something about it. You know? Agreed. Yeah. Sorry to veer off, but I'm so hungry right now. Okay, well, if you know anything about me, I get hungry so easily. So I've been trying to up the protein in my diet. And I feel like there's so many benefits of a high protein diet, like better metabolism, hormone regulation, bone health. But I really struggle in getting protein in my diet. So I've been chomping on these meat sticks called chomps as my snack. And they're so freaking good. My favorites are their Italian style beef sticks. And oh my gosh, their jalapeno beef ones are perfection. Of course you like meat sticks. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love chomps too. Their sticks have up to 12 grams of protein per stick. Also, I'm pretty careful with what I put in my body. So I can confirm that there isn't any unhealthy additives in these and they contain zero grams of sugar. So they're low carb, keto friendly, allergy friendly, and don't contain any fillers. It's just all natural ingredients. I love that. So right now, Chomps is offering our listeners 20% off your first order and free shipping when you go to chomps.com slash out of the pods. Go to chomps.com slash out of the pods to see all their delicious flavors and get 20% off your first order and free shipping. That's C-H-O-M-P-S dot com slash out of the pods. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. Okay, Natalie, in other... <laughs> drama related news do you there's watch art? there's there's a lot going on there's something in the air in 2024 already um have you watched the real housewives of salt lake city no that is the one franchise or that is the one city of real housewives that i don't watch oh my god you're missing out because it is probably my favorite my favorite really? because first of all there's a lot of like mormons there's a lot there's just a lot going on there's like a lot of layers to these ladies but i wanted to tell you about this one significant thing that happened in the finale oh my gosh okay so obviously there is <laughs> i don't even know oh my saying. gosh so why is this this better be so good because you're so excited to tell me and i uh, i literally went better blow my mind <laughs> I immediately went to like Instagram. I was like, what is happening? But anyways, okay. So there's this girl named Monica on the Real House of Salt Lake City. She is new this year. And she's been like really crazy about like just saying a lot of like random rumors all season. And everyone's like, what the, what is happening? So mm -hmm. essentially Heather gay she's been on the show since season one of salt lake city and essentially she pulls all of the housewives together except for monica and she's like i have something to tell you guys and she drops this bombshell that monica is actually this instagram troll account called reality von Tees. and oh 
This Instagram account, Reality Von Tees, apparently has been like outing Jen Shaw and all of the bad behaviors that she's like done over the past whatever time. And for those who ha don't know about this show, Jen Shaw is also from Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, but she went to prison for defrauding elderly people. So it's like the worst crime you can ever commit. Like it's horrible. <laughs> like yeah, it's so, so bad. bad. And I've heard about Jen Shaw too. Yeah. She was huge, I think, back in the day. I just never watched that franchise either until recently. But, but is it a bad thing that if if Monica is reality Von Tees, which it sounds like she is, like that was confirmed. There's other why people is involved, it bad? she said. But yes. Interesting. Okay, why is it bad that she exposed Jen Shaw? Like, isn't that a oh. good thing? Because I feel like Jen Shaw, I did hear that she defrauded elderly people. Yes, so... To your point, it is a good thing. And that's what Monica stands behind that she's like, I would do it again because she's the the worst human in the world and she had to be sent to jail. So she like does it, but then she goes, but talking about all of you guys was just like a um, whatever. Oh, she talked, so she about, talked about the other housewives. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So that's, that's why Heather got so pissed and she was like you have been trolling us online like there's moments we woke up scared and like just feared for our lives just because like all this information is being exposed and it was you all along and like it was such an like that episode that finale will go down in history as one of the best episodes of Real Housewives it was so good so good you need Wait, to watch it okay a few questions when the way that that episode was edited did monica come off as in the wrong like she was the villain oh yeah because heather was like literally accusing her and the entire time at dinner she was like i am not reality bonties and she's oh, like she it's not, not me and then and then after a little while she goes well it's not enti i'm not entirely reality bonties and she like exposed herself at dinner monica was like there's other people involved behind the account though. And one of those people that was involved was Heather's hairstylist. So Ooh, that is so is, bad. That's yeah. So, so right bad. now, right now in the, um, in the Instagram universe, they're just like, everyone's like spewing out so much information right now. So there's the reunion's going to be really good. But my question to you would be how, wild would it be if you were on a reoccurring reality tv show and one of your cast members is a mole essentially and is like, or like talking you. shit is like talking shit about you for a profit to the blogs yeah. oh, i would literally lose my mind that would cause like a bunch of mistrust i honestly think that that's really shitty it's so like shitty. can you imagine that you have this this account that talks like really negatively about people around you and you can't say it to their face and you still surround yourselves with those people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's like, all, it's like huge manipulation, oh. but it's kind of funny, but it's still like, like that's something like a bad person would do. Like it's oh, not, I, truly it's like though. I, the internet is very divided though, because they're like, thank God for Monica because she brought the drama this season and she exposed Jen Shaw and, you know, I, I don't know. It's just so interesting how it's all. Well, we had that. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? We had that? a mole in the friend group, remember? Well, I wouldn't call it a mole in the friend group, but a mole part of the broader cast. Uh, okay, explain this to me. What is? Let me jog your memory, Miss Please, Dora, because I'm like, I don't know. There's so much that happens. I don't remember a lot of things. Okay. I, I'm not sure if I have a really good memory or you weren't you weren't sitting around for this, but I think you were. There was that situation where Danielle and Nick's divorce was um, was leaked to the news. Oh, mm hmm. And Danielle was very sure it was someone from our broader cast, like one of the one of the men. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember we were discussing this, and we we're like, actually, wait, it actually might be. Yes. One of these men who leaked it to a news outlet no. because he had, I guess, like a connection to like someone to who something. A news outlet. Yeah. See, and that's I remember the... it like rock kind of not rocking our world, but we're like, what the heck? Like, yeah, 
Wow, I actually, I think I remember that now. Now that I think about it, I was like, oh, yes. I, I actually do remember when that happened. I feel like it's just like such a distant <laughs> memory that I completely forgot about it. And it didn't happen to me. So I was just like, oh, it's not like in the forefront of my mind. But yes, I do remember that. And that's what the scariest fucking part is, is like keep your friend circle super close, especially when it comes to media or like, you know, I don't know, fame is kind of like a drug and people will do fucking anything for it sometimes. And it's like, I don't know, everyone's values are so different. And I'm like, don't trust a hoe out here. You can't trust a hoe. <laughs> you really can't. <laughs> I'm not, well, I'm not and then, talking about anyone in specific, but like, don't trust people. <laughs> like, well, and then there was that other situation too. Yes. With, that involved me. This one kind of like shook me a little bit and I felt like I, I felt so uncomfortable with just like talking to um, the women at a point, but I, I have a good idea of who it was. So now I'm like, whatever. Um, but there was a TikTok made by Zachary Reality. It was when the first drop of episodes came out for our season and he made a TikTok. And the only reason I knew about this TikTok, I actually stayed off TikTok a lot during our season, like really looking at what people were saying about our season type of thing. I just kind of focused on posting like on my TikTok. Anyway, but so many people sent me this TikTok where he says, I heard that the women on the cast think that like Natalie's getting a way better edit than she deserves or something like that. <laughs> and the women on the cast. The please. cast. But what a I, big... I, I think I know who it was. Like I'm like a 99.9% .9 sure. Yeah. And that's the sad part about it is I think I, I often think about how different people are after the show airs versus how it was before because there's so many other factors added on to all of it and I it, even in this situation like I'm just like holy shit like this woman it's it's a little bit different of a reality show because obviously it's like friendships are being built and like you're talking about your kids and your family and like they were there like for the real housewives situation they were there celebrating Monica's birthday and all of the women were there and like they were helping her like because she was like, oh, I've never had a birthday like this before. Like, I'm, you know, thank you so much. And then behind the scenes, like she's someone completely different. And you're like, what? And like talking shit about them. Talking shit about them. But you know what's even more fucked up, Natalie? Because you just reminded me when you said the whole Zachary reality situation. She, Monica said, she's like, you guys should not say much because you guys have responded and talked to me using reality von tees, So you don't want to out, you don't want me to out you. So, oh, like they've individually messaged reality. Messaged von, her. Not knowing it was Monica. Ooh. Exactly. Ooh, so she's like, that is messy. people. And I'm like, ooh, man. Sometimes the best the best entertainment is what comes post show. No, on literally. the internet. Okay, I have more things that, like, based on what we went through, that relates to this. I know a cast member from our season. Ooh, this is so juicy. Well, I feel like you might know about this too, <laughs> I but I know about, about it. He or she, I won't like, you know, like expose to. <laughs> created Please. an Instagram or not an Instagram a Reddit account and was like <sighs> shitting on all of us. What like, a fucking loser. Anything, but he would be like really shitting on us. And then his history was found because he would like defend himself and like shit on all of us. Yes. And then people oh, are like, wait, you know, a lot of personal information. Wow. And they like called him out and then he deleted his Reddit account. Oh my God. Okay. You said he, but anyways, oh, holy she, shit. Or she, or she, <laughs> Dude, that is like next level. Like uh, how gross of a person are you? Okay, but I'm not going to lie to you. I have a Finsta account, but that's because I need to like go and like watch people's lives or like not, you know what I mean? Like their Instagram live. Like it, well, I don't want do them to know I that found it's out. me. How do you think I found out Jackie from season four was talking shit about us on Instagram live? Oh, you You're my finsta, baby. Let's go. Something Lydia from season five should learn. I was like, when yeah. you check, if you're creeping on your ex's exes or who he's hanging out with, you always do it from a finsta. A hundred percent. 
Yes, like you creep on your exes through your Finsta. Like, but the worst is when you get confused. Like you think you're on your Finsta, but you're actually on your real Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> that has never happened to me. I'm very careful. <laughs> okay, I've done that. Oh, okay. Sorry, we are going everywhere. Um, I don't know if, I'm, if this is normal behavior. It's not because we're in reality TV no, land. That's why. No, no. If this is not, I haven't even said the behavior yet. Oh. I just know that it pertains to reality TV life. No. Okay. I don't know if this is normal behavior, but I, I check up on my exes. Not often, but like, I would say like once every few months. I, I check up on them too sometimes. Yeah. One thing I will say is I don't check up on Shane's. That is one person's I don't, because he, I don't know what happened, but I think he blocked me at one point and then I blocked him and then it caused my Finsta kept to be blocked too. Oh yeah. Like, that's the worst. Through my Finsta. But my other exes like from like 2016, I have, or like 2018, like I don't have any feelings for them, but I like to check up like, how's life going? Mm-hmm. And so I'll like click on their stories and stuff. And then one time. <laughs> <laughs> and like, these are, these are men, like my exes, like, you know, like we're millennials. We only have like 300 followers. Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like we're from it's back that in the day. time of life where it's like yeah. 200 to 300 followers is the max you're going to get because no one really yeah. used Instagram. Um, <laughs> so, and you know, like when you post a story, like if you have like a small amount of followers, you're going to look at who looked at those stories. It's just like natural. Oh, hundred percent. I don't do it now because we have like more followers. So it's like, who cares? I'm like, whatever. It's hard to see. Anyways, just like, what did this, did this happen? Like in November, I creeped no. on him. I was like, oh, I wonder what he's like doing. If he's on vacation with his girlfriend. Like, what I know exactly what ex you're talking about too. This bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I creeped on all his stories. Like, you know, like everything I was like looking through, I actually liked a photo, but I was like, whatever. <gasps> I'm on my Finsta. No, you were not on your Finsta. <gasps> no. Natalie, that is criminal. Because I went to go log out of what I thought was my Finsta and it was just my real Instagram. Oh my God, like, how do embarrassing. I do? I was like, what do I do? Like, what do I, I have secondhand like? embarrassment for you right now. How did that, how'd it and, go? Uh, I ended up just like, Are you tapping out the anxiety? <laughs> yeah, like on my head. I was like, like, oh. I ended, up, I ended up blocking him. I don't know where this is trying to go, but like, it, 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 is it normal? You like, blocked him so he wouldn't see your notifications? <laughs> I just blocked him. I got like um, very like disheveled anxious. and like kind of like anxious, and I was just like black. <laughs> but I wonder if he got the notifications. Like I actually liked something, and I was like do 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 like back for I like something from 2019. Like this man had not posted since 2019, and I liked it. Natalie, of course he, of course he got a notification, and he tried to click on you, and it said profile not found. And he's like, like I, did she like, block me? <laughs> But can I tell you, like, it wasn't that I viewed all his stories, liked it, and then blocked him immediately. I Mm. didn't know I was on my real Instagram until, like, hours and hours later. What do you mean? How? How? Like, I went to creep on it, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, that's it. And I put my phone down. And then I went to, like, you know, go. Oh, and then you were on your real one. And then I went back to open my phone. And then I'm like, blah, blah, blah. Like, I must be still on my Finsta. And I went to go creep on other people. Like, no one that's, like notable but I was like you know like whatever you know that is and then I went to try to log out (laughs) I'm really embarrassed for you but also this is a sign to whoever's listening if you have a finsta make sure you were on your finsta Mm. but what I will say is I feel like every reality tv show personality has a finsta and definitely has the urge, and some of them have the urge to create a fake Reddit account or whatever account to like defend themselves. I, feel I like would that's never. A thing. I would never because I'm nervous. I don't know how technology works enough to be like, can this all, like, what if all of a sudden like Reddit explodes and they're like, oh my God, everyone's like personal information shows, like behind that anonymous username? Like, that is a fear of why I can't ever do it. I, I doubt that would happen, but there is a way to track it through IP addresses. And let yeah, me tell you, yeah, like that's we stuff. can. Yeah. So that's and why like, PI on my could do it. I never comment or anything that will ever like have some be like, hmm, I wonder who exactly. this is. Exactly. You know? The Finsta is not for liking things. It's not for commenting on things. It is purely to creep. It is purely to join Instagram lives. And that is it. <laughs> do not do anything 100%. else with that. And don't follow. Have me. I had the urge? <laughs> have I had the urge to like defend my friends or yes. myself? 
with my Finsta, yes. But the goal of a Finsta is to never be caught that it's your Finsta. Never. You just can't do it. Exactly. But I go back to the Reddit account. I think it's so funny. But I also think was like, that is so fucked up. Like, it's, it's so, so fucked up. up. The Reddit thing is wild to me because, first of all, as a fucking, like, somebody who has, uh, um, like, a following or, like, people talk shit about them on Reddit, don't fucking go to Reddit and read that. If you have, like, it just creates a bad mental <laughs> space because every single person has yeah. shit on them. It is the devil's playground. Reddit is. Like, well, I will never go on that platform. Look. I, you I, love Reddit. I, I use I use Reddit for financial advice. That how's how, that is how I learned. Like from um, Reddit is Good how for I you. Be financially <laughs> literate. Like where I learned to invest, how I managed my money. It was literally through reading Reddit threads, like Wall Street bets, things like that. But anyways, I just think it's weird that a cast member was talking shit because I'm like, if you're gonna talk shit, own it. Like. <laughs> Say it to my face or say it with your name attached to it. Don't literally. You're really going to create a fake anonymous Reddit account to talk shit about me. Also, like, that's just like such an insecure fucking thing to do. Like, and I, I've heard castmates and I think you know who I'm talking about have sent in like leaks about themselves that no one would fucking care to ever like even. Yes. You know I'm what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm like, no one gives a shit if you're with a random girl here. Like, what? And yeah. they, and he literally, what did he do? He uh, exposed himself. Or he sent a picture of himself to this troll Dumois. account. Demois, that's not, who it was. Yeah, it's, it's not a troll like account. an anonymous, Sorry. like, I don't know. It's Like celebrity no, sightings and whatever yeah like where you could send anonymous like stories or um things you've heard about other celebrities or like if you see like two celebrities like you take a photo of them you could like leak it to Dumois it has <gasps> I think that um account has like million plus followers oh but so yes, many I know who I'm talking about okay so Dumois is kind of like She's kind of like Gossip Girl, right? A little yeah. bit. Can I tell you, at the end of uh, the Salt Lake City finale, that's what they're calling Monica. Monica was like, even Gossip Girl had to get caught. <laughs> like, she said something along those lines. And I was like, this is iconic. Iconic. <laughs> like, it's so Look. good. Uh, she's but I, I, I know what it feels like. I feel like when you've got, like, a mole around you, it's yeah, that's very bullshit. weird betraying feeling but that is yeah. really funny now I have to go watch it it's so good Natalie and then also we find out who punched Heather it's Jen Shaw dun 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 we knew <gasps> we absolutely knew it was her I cannot believe that Heather got punched in the face by her, a castmate and she stays this is why I want to get Heather on the podcast like I absolutely love her I'm going to read her book Bad Mormon I'm a Heather Stan now. <laughs> okay, so I I have not watched Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, but I heard about Heather Gay's black eye. Like people are like, "What happened to you?" And she wouldn't say. And it was confirmed it was Jen Shaw, her friend. Mm -hmm. Her friend Jen, Jen Shaw. Yep. I punched you in the eye. Dude. Would you keep it secret for the public? Yes. Because did it happen drunkenly? Like, did she straight up just like socket her? They were real okay. So Jen Shaw has a history of uh, anger issues because you see with Reality Vontees what she's like released. It's like Jen Shaw yelling at her employees, and like it is horrifying. It's like really, really bad. And so I think Heather was like really trying to be a good friend to her, but yeah, she was drunk and she punched her. That's why I feel like I wouldn't. I love you too much to send you to the cops. I don't care. Punch me, I guess. That's so mean to say. That's weird to say, but I truly think I would protect you, actually. <laughs> no, same. Because I think that we've yeah. done it with our other cast members. I think, yeah. you know, we've been honest but not honest about this because we love, like, our friends from our cast and also, yeah. like, other cast members from Love is Blind. But there has been, I, I wouldn't say necessarily involving Deep D and I, but there's been, like, shitty things that have happened. Mm -hmm. But we know that... It's not, sometimes it's just not worth, like it's not our business to expose type of thing. 100%. And so, um, and I think we also do it because like they're our friends. Like it would look bad on them, but there is some like shit that has gone down across mm -hmm. the Love is Blind seasons with like cast members within, you know, from different seasons. 
We're girls, so, girls. So, yeah. I think that there is like some sort of girls code. Yeah. And, and like whatever shit we deal with, we deal with it internally. Like the public doesn't need to know about that shit, you know? Yeah. So I think that, no. if, yes, if you punched me in the face when you were drunk and having a little moment, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think I would have to, I, I wouldn't expose it either. I think I would yeah. be like, we got to deal with this privately and like, <laughs> we're like, we're like, canceling the podcast. Somehow. Yeah. <laughs> We're Don't act like the, the end of it. <laughs> I was like, I'm a vengeful bitch, but I'll never <laughs> toss you under publicly. Dude, what the the worst fucking part about the entire situation is I remember this scene when Jen comes into the room after she punched her and she's like, we have to come up with a reason. Like, that's why we brought you. Like, what what, what should we say happened? And we're like, the oh. fuck? <laughs> she's like, Heather's like, I don't know. What did happen? She's like, I don't know. Did you fall? <laughs> like, I was just so weird. But that was funny, man. Man, oh man, that is reality TV gold, you know, gold. Wow, wow, what a I season. I wish sometimes, like, I wish sometimes. Well, I was gonna say, I feel like sometimes think that. I feel like sometimes I would like for people to think that. Um, we live very like content, boring lives. Like we're just, you know, just like, like floating away or we're just floating through life and it's easy mm -hmm. but there's some shit that goes down in the behind the scenes like sometimes I was like if there is a camera here I feel like we'd be called Vanderdump rules Vanderdump <laughs> ma'am <laughs> Vanderpump rules is coming back for my Bravo fans please slide in my DM if you want to discuss <laughs> But what a crazy 2024 for not only the Real Housewives, but also Love is Blind. We'll keep you Truly. updated if we hear anything more. And obviously, if you hear anything, please send us a DM or comment on our Instagram page at Out of the Pods. Yes, and make sure you leave a review and subscribe. See you next Wednesday. Bye.